everybody this is Carla with Cobweb Corner and welcome to floss tube number 57 it is April 21st uh, 2021 and it's just been a couple weeks since my last video and I have a lot to share with you so I hope you enjoy what you see if you do enjoy the video please click the subscribe button and then click the bell so you get notified when uh, new thing new uh, videos have been uploaded um, personal update uh, it's all about vaccines so I got my first vaccine went absolutely wonderfully i completely relaxed my arm when i got it i had basically no uh pain in my arm and i had no other effects at all so just a tiny tiny bit of yeah i can kind of tell that i got something so i felt great after the first one I'm, i get my second one a week from yesterday so uh this coming tuesday and probably be a little bit different story with that my husband got his second shot yesterday and he's doing really good. He had just a little bit of a restless night, um, maybe a tiny bit of a fever, but uh, overall feels fine. So he did really well with the second shot. And um, both, I think I mentioned before, both my parents are vaccinated completely and my daughter called and she is getting vaccinated. So we are starting to plan some get togethers and um, some travels. So we are super, super excited about that. I still have a total of three weeks before I'll be, uh, you know, quote, uh, as safe as I can be and um, get my phone out of my pocket. And um, we've already booked a flight uh, for a trip to Las Vegas in May. And we're also flying up to my niece's uh, high school graduation in late May, the, actually Memorial Day weekend. So there will be a couple of weeks, a uh, um, few days that, we'll, that the shop will be, uh, quote, closed and that will be announced on my site. And when that happens, the uh, you can still shop and you can still check out. It just might be a few days delay in shipping and that will be very clear when that happens and, and uh, how that works. So I am really, really excited. My daughter is, she'll be fully vaccinated in two weeks, I believe. And then she has to wait a couple weeks after that and then she's coming home. So that will be the first time that we've seen her since Christmas of 2019 and I cannot wait to see her again. Um, she's actually going to uh, come home for like eight days and uh, do some working from home and I'm, I'm just so excited, I can't wait. She'll be home the second week of June. So very, very happy uh, and excited about that um, in case you can't tell. <laughs> um, um, stitching mail. Um, I got some amazing, amazing things in the mail this week from some wonderful people. First thing I got was this book from one of my customers, um, Desiree. And Desiree, I just can't tell you how shocked and surprised I was when this came in the mail and how much I love it. So this is a book called In Praise of the Needlewoman, Embroiderers, Knitters, Lace Makers, and Weavers in Art. and it has a history of pictures, paintings, and prints of women doing needlework. And then each one has, well, that one has just shows some needle. Oh, no, no, there's a lady there. So um, each one then has a write-up about that piece and a little bit about the artist and what the author thinks might be going on in this piece. And the way I really like that because it's, so it's basically one page per photo or you know one layout per photo and it's such a wonderful book just to sit down and thumb through and read about a few paintings at a time and I kind of equate it to when you go to a nice museum you can either just walk around and look at the paintings or look at the sculptures and stuff or you can get that the um audio tour where you hold the thing up to your ear and I always do that and I, I recommend that whenever you go to any kind of uh, tour, tourist site, uh, museum, uh, um, ruins, you know, stuff like that. If they offer a video tour or an audio tour, I mean, always, always get it because it is so much more information and it also kind of forces you to slow down your visit and really take in what you're seeing, but it gives a lot of different information on 
um, the painting or the sculpture or whatever it is that you're seeing. And that's what I kind of equate to the write-ups is like having that little audio um, description for every painting that's in here. So um, I just, I could not be more happy with this book and I'm going to enjoy it for a really, really long time. I put a link down to it um, in my, uh, down below in my more information section or where it says show more. And I looked and you can get the book on Amazon for like, I don't know, under $10 or something. I don't know what if there's shipping involved or what, but um, it's a nice thick, thick book uh, over about 200 pages, just under 200 pages. So that is In Praise of the Needle Woman, Embroiderers, Knitters, Lace Makers, and Weavers in Art. So thank you, Desiree. I am just so excited to have this in my collection. The other thing I got in the mail that I also couldn't believe was Helen D, who has a floss tube channel. Her and I have become good friends. Um, and she sent me this amazing project bag and she said, uh, this is just a welcome spring gift. And I really like it. I love the bees and the trim that she did here. She does such a good job. And she has a tutorial on project bags. I don't know if it's this kind or what, but she has a number of tutorials. I, there's a link down below in the show more uh, section with a link to her floss tube channel. And she has a playlist of all of her tutorials. But this one's a little bigger than the other ones I have. And I actually have a project. I've been working on one of the lavender and lace angels, and that has a lot of floss and stuff with it. And I none of my project bags were big enough for that. So I think I'm gonna use this for that. So I was just so excited to go to the mailbox uh, the last couple of weeks. I, so what am I thankful for besides um, good friends on floss tube and, and in my business? My um, best things today are my tea that I'm drinking right now. And I'm drinking a tea by Tea Fort, T-E-A-F-O-R-T-E. -E, and I'm drinking raspberry nectar. And we, I learned about this tea a few years ago when, um, I don't know, our bank or something sent out little gifts. And it was like six things of Tea Fort tea that were already in filters and, and you could be steeped. And I'm like, this is really good tea. And um, a couple of months ago, Amazon had a lightning deal and they had T4 tea in their lightning deal. It was 50% off and I grabbed it and I drank all of that. So I ordered some more and I ordered the single steeps um, box. And this is the what they call the winter collection. And here's the one, oh, that's not the one I'm drinking, but they come like this and um, they're, they're not filtered. You have to have your own tea steeper and there's just enough in there for a cup of tea. And what's nice is you get like, um, like, I don't know, 14 or 15 different flavors. This one has two each of 14 flavors, I think. And so it's a great box for when you have company and people can go through and pick what kind of tea they want to drink. And also a lot of times I buy, you know, like a half a pound of loose leaf tea. But then you, you like, you're only drinking that flavor all the time. So this is a little bit more expensive when I buy by the, by the single steeps like this. But then I can have a different tea every day if I want. So I usually drink coffee in the morning and then, oh, three or four days a week I have a cup of tea in the afternoon. And I love that. There's a link down below if you want to read the reviews on it. I also got one called the Herbal Collection. And it's another box just like that one, and they're all caffeine free. So when I want to have tea at night, I just go to that box and I can pick from all the different flavors in there and choose that. So that's one of my best things. Uh, another best thing that is also part of my craft talk today is my crafting table. Um, I mentioned this a couple times ago. I got mine at Joann's, but I think I think they have them on Amazon and I'll put a link down below just so you can read the reviews and see the table, you know, more about the dimensions and everything. But I'm hoping I can get this to work. Um, I'm gonna try to put pictures up here. So the table, the reason I like it uh, is it's adjustable to height, but the caveat to that is once you get it 
put together, it's not super easy to change the height. So we measured what I thought might be a good height and luckily it turned out good. And my husband did put the table together for me. I don't know if I could have gotten it together by myself. I probably could have, but it would have took me a lot longer than it, it took him. So he put it together. And I like that it's I have it standing height, but then it has three different um, layouts. It can be fold super thin to store it, and then you can fold it way out, and then you can fold it halfway out. So here's the first picture of the table completely opened up, and it gives me just a fabulous working space to do fabric when I'm sewing, to lay out my fabric, cut my fabric, fold my fabric, um, I also will sit there, I have a little bar stool thing. Um, I'll sit there and uh, watch tutorials and stuff like that and kind of gather my materials together. Just fabulous workspace. So the next picture shows it with one of the leaves turned down and you still have, so you can move it up against the wall or take up less space in your room and you still have a nice work workspace. And then the third one is shows it all folded up and put away. And I really like that. Um, I don't wanna leave it out all the time because I also use my craft room for yoga. So here's a picture of my yoga mat laid out with that table put away and I still have just enough room to do yoga practice. So I really like that, that table. I got it at, like I said, I got mine at Joann's. They happen to have one in stock here in town and I looked at the reviews and I, I hemmed and hawed about what I wanted to have and I decided I really wanted one that I could fold up and roll away. Um, the other thing about it that I, I don't know whether it's a good thing or bad thing, only two of the wheels lock. So um, that, you know, if you're, if you're, depending on how you're using it, that might be a problem where you can't lock all four wheels. But there's a lot of reviews on it in both Joann's and I'm pretty sure I had read reviews on Amazon too. And I will put that link to, link below, but I highly recommend the table. The only thing is if you think you want it to be able to constantly adjust heights, it's not gonna be a, a super easy thing to do. So, um, other stitchy stuff. My works in progress. So first of all, last last video, I showed you my pillow and I really complained about the bottom being so such a mess and that my fabric, my Ada had frayed when I was trying to sew the p pillow. And a number of people said, did you use uh, interfacing or stabilizer? And I didn't, and I, I need to talk to some people. I'm not quite sure you know, what I should have used. I'm assuming just the interfacing or stabilizer like I use in my machine embroidery. But other other people didn't have much patience with me. They're like, put some trim on it and call it done. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I, I worry. I'm too much a perfectionist. So I found this cute flower uh, ribbon at Joann's and I just used some fabric glue and covered up all my mess and that will be going out to my sister-in-law. So that is now done and I'm happy. I, I thought about putting it all the way around, but it was like, no, I'm not gonna do that. And I just put it on the bottom to cover up my mistakes. So that is um, Mon Jardin by, uh, oh, I can't remember now. I wanna say Jar Jardin Privé, but I'm not sure that's right. Um, so that was a really fun stitch and super, super, super quick stitch. So that's done. Then I've been working on, um, oh, then the other thing, big thing, is I got a new sewing embroidery machine. Um, my husband, a year ago, if you've been watching my videos for a while, last summer, um, I had finally gotten out a sewing machine that my husband had bought me the year before for Christmas that had an embroidery feature in it. And at the time he bought it for me, I'm like, I don't know that I'll really use that. Well, I finally got it out, learned how to use it and really enjoyed it. But the machine he got, and he said, um, use this and see what you like. And if you really like it, we'll you know, get you something a little more advanced. And right away, I was, there were the machine I had that he gave me is limited to a four by four embroidery field. So, every time I went to buy a project or buy a pattern, it was too big for the machine that I had. And I got kind of frustrated. <laughs> so I 
thought and thought and thought about it. And one thought, will I, is this something that I will continue to do? And um, decided to go for it. And I bought a new embroidery machine that has multiple size hoops all the way up to, I think, 10 by 10 by 14 or 10 by 16 or something, a really big hoop. And um, we got that last week and I have been trying to learn how to use it. It's a lot more advanced than the machine I had. And I downloaded a pattern for a scissors case and started my first project with it. And this is it. And this part turned out really well. So it's a zippered case that you would just stick your flowers in or your flowers, your scissors in. And uh, this part is all applique. And that's the first applique that I've done um, along with embroidery. And that went really easy. The instructions were super easy. There's a zipper under here hidden. And that went really easy. It was all um, in the hoop, which means that you lay your fabrics and your materials on the hoop and the machine knows what to stitch. Uh, but when I got to the part where I was actually the last step where I'm have the the fabrics turned um, right sides together so that you sew the final thing and then you turn it inside out everything went wacko and the reason was a learning experience um, I did not have it hooped correctly and it wasn't stable in the hoop so it it did get ruined um, everything all this stitching here is supposed to be uh, hidden and there were pieces that didn't get sewed. I broke two needles. <laughs> so I'm going to redo this because I know what my mistake was. Um, I also used a interfacing or a stabilizer that was a tear away, thinking I would be able to um, tear it away when I was done. But the way the pattern's designed, the tear away stable, uh, stabilizer stays in there. So it's a little stiff and when I, at first I was like, I'm not sure I like that, but for a scissors keep, you kind of want it kind of stiff. Um, but I think I might use wash away stabilizer the next time. So, but isn't the pattern pretty? That part worked out really well. And um, this goes down, that covers up like that. And then I just got, had this little ring that, uh, I don't know if you can see it. Uh, it says balance. And that was going to be my little holder thing. So I will give this, the, the, the frustrating part is this part took like two hours. Um, a lot of it was me learning, reading the pattern and figuring out what I needed to do. But then you have to change all your threads every time there's a color change. Get your fabric, um, trim your fabric, you know, get the next color thread loaded. So it takes a long time and that was just absolutely perfect before I started doing the final assembly. So we'll give that another try and see if I can end up with a, a, a functional, all that really got ruined was some, some fabric in a zipper and uh, I'll re reuse this uh, ring. So, but I think, I, I think it's gonna be neat when it's done. It's just really pretty. So we'll give that another try. And then uh, my stitching, I've been stitching Garden Fair by Courtney Collections and I, didn't get a lot of stitching in, but I did finish another band. So this is where I was last time. This is where I am now. So I finished, whoops, finished this band here, all of that, and then started that. So again, I've talked about it a lot. This is, this is only done in two, in two colors. And I'm doing it in silk threads. And if you've wanted to do a larger project, I highly recommend this pattern. Um, it goes very quickly. There's a lot of empty space. You're not changing colors all the time. So like, you know, this, I could do all of the red. And like right now, I started out just for counting purposes. I got down and did this little swirl. And now I'm just gonna go and do all the black in one, you know, before I start the rest of the red. And then this, this pattern repeats under the waves of the black swirl. So I, I love this. I need to get a couple other things out and work on them too. But I would like to try to have a band done every time I do a floss tube. Uh, so we'll see. So I'm right here on the pattern. 
So we're getting there. I'm getting the next band should put me at halfway done. Um, so that'll be, I just, I just love that pattern. Um, a few of you have been purchasing it. Oops, I'm going to ruin the pattern. Um, oh, I'm back there. Sorry about that. Um, I didn't want to roll my chair over top of the pattern. Um, a few people have been uh, purchasing it and telling me that they're going to start stitching. I would love to see your progress on it. And I think I'm out on my website right now, but I've ordered more and they're coming tomorrow. Okay, so giveaway winners from last time. Um, the giveaway is, first of all, I'm going to give this, uh, the winner for the planner did not uh, get back to me. So this will be one of the giveaways later in the video. Again, this week's giveaways were uh, Joyful Scene by Teresa Kogut and Afternoon Nap Kit by Bucilla. And these were both donated by one of my customers, Noelle. And you had to use the word joy and nap. And 17 people used the word joy. And the winner is Georgia Thornton. So Georgia, if you um, are watching, my email is down below. You need to email me, put floss tube winner in the subject line, and then make sure to tell me what you won. So I get a lot of emails every day. And um, I made the mistake, somebody just put floss tube winner in the title, and I just assumed it was the most recent floss tube, and so I sent out the wrong thing. So we had to get that straightened out. So always be descriptive. Don't, don't assume um, that, I just, that I know who you are and what, you're what, what, um, what it might be referring to, but definitely put floss tube winner in the, in the subject line. The second one, you had to use the word nap, and there were only six people interested in this, and the winner is Owl and Gator Stitchery. So again, contact me and I will get that out to you. Okay, um, business topic. A couple things, first one quick is um, I do a number of collaborations with designers and other floss tubers and collaborations are great uh, for both parties involved and almost always a really good deal for the customers or the people viewing uh, the floss tuber Instagram account or whatever. And I've been working with Michelle at Bendy Stitchy for uh, quite a while, over a year. And uh, we do, we've done a, a few things together. She does some giveaways on her channel. And she has, uh, if you haven't watched her, uh, she is just an amazing contributor to the cross stitch uh, community. She stitches like crazy. She also does some knitting and a little bit of diamond painting. And she has lots of videos and she's active on Instagram. And she also has a Patreon account and on YouTube, you can do a join, a membership. So those Patreon and the YouTube join are membership things where you are supporting an artist or uh, a YouTuber or whatever and saying, hey, I like your content. Um, I'd like, I want to make sure you keep doing it. And I, you know, would like some extra benefits for supporting you. And she, she has an account for both. And we've done, we're doing a collaboration for her membership accounts. And what the deal, what the, uh, benefit is, is everyone who is a member by, May 31st, we'll get a, an exclusive coupon to Cowboy Corner for 20% off your order. 20% off uh, non-sale items and it doesn't count toward floss, but it counts towards everything else. And you can only get that code if you're one of her Patreon or YouTube join members, which if you put in an order, it will, I don't know what, what the membership prices are. I think they vary. I think they're as low as like $5 a month or something like that and you can cancel. Um, I really don't know how all that works, but if you go to her site and the links down below, there's a link to her channel, which has the YouTube join, and there's a link to her Patreon account. And on Patreon, a lot of, a lot of designers are on Patreon, and they offer exclusive insights into their design process. Sometimes they offer exclusive designs or maybe an early access to one of their new designs and they offer um, just content that you're not gonna get anywhere else. And then on things like this where we collaborate, they can offer you um, a discount 
elsewhere in the industry. So a discount to Cowboy Corner. So it's a good deal for you. You would more than pay for your first month's membership with the coupon code that you would you would get. And um, you don't need to join both. You just need to uh, look, look at seeing which one might interest you more. And Michelle will be happy to answer your questions about what kind of content she provides and uh, what you would, what the benefits to you as a member of either one of those accounts would be. So that is one of my business accounts is uh, collaboration or my business topics is collaboration with Michelle at Bendy Stitchy. And that the coupon that you'll get with her uh, for my shop is valid uh, for one time use and it's valid till May 31st. So you have a while to think about that. Um, the other thing on the industry is uh, the term automatics. What are automatics and uh, why don't I do them? So an automatic is a program uh, usually with a designer, but also with, uh, I know Hoffman does it, uh, where you as a shop owner sign up uh, and say, I want you to automatically ship all your new designs to me as soon as they come out. And um, the benefit is, is that often designers will provide their automatic shipments before they will release the um, designs to wholesale distributors like Hoffman, Witchell, or Yarn Tree. So the people who are on the automatics list get the designs and are able to offer them to their customers a little bit sooner than the rest of the industry. Um, on Hoffman, with, it, with Hoffman, which is a huge um, wholesale retailer, the way it works is you have to sign up for I don't know how many different artists, designers, I'm thinking 12, I think it's 12. So I would go in and I would pick 12 that offer automatics and say, I want their new releases every, and it's a shipment that's out once a month. So let's say I signed up for Plum Street Sampler, uh, Bendy Stitchy, uh, Rosewood Manor, you know, whatever. Then once a month I would get an automatic shipment from Hoffman and on those, I think I get a 5% discount. Now, that those benefits are really good, especially having early access to a design. Um, of course, the discount's good too, but I don't, I used to do them and I used to do them with a number of designers because I, I like to support the designer directly, but the reason I don't, there's two reasons I don't participate in anymore. One of the main reasons is shipping. So, um, Rather than placing in one order with Hoffman or Witchell or Yarn Tree and qualifying for free shipping, every time I have, uh, you know, there's a lot, a lot of designers. So every time I would get a, sh a monthly shipment from them, that's usually at least $5 shipping. Some of them are extremely fair on shipping and it's more like three. Um, but sometimes a designer will, will only have one release. So you're paying for shipping for uh, you know, I usually would order three copies of this, of every chart and you're paying for shipping on three copies. Well, that adds up really fast. So let's say I did automatics with six designers, which isn't very many. That would be probably $30 a month that I'd be paying in shipping that I wouldn't normally pay. Um, so that's one reason. And the second reason that I don't do it is you get everything they release. So, um, that sounds really good, but sometimes there's things I just wouldn't choose for my shop. And when I was doing it with Hoffman in the past, um, I ended up kind of getting, I still have some charts that came with the automatics from eight, nine years ago that haven't sold because they just weren't um, winners. You know, not every single chart is something that is going to appeal to my customers. So I would rather choose which charts to include in my shop and know that they're probably going to do well rather than uh, just getting everything and hoping that they do well. So um, that's a term, a business term that's in the industry and a lot of people participate in it. And I think the biggest benefit is getting early access to some of the brand new charts, but it's just something that over time I've decided doesn't, doesn't work well for me. So, Bo, you're going to have to get down because i got to show new inventory. 
Um, all right, so she does, she doesn't want to get down. So I've got a lot of new inventory to show you. Um, I've been still working on um, trying to get things entered from my expo purchases. And I still have boxes and boxes of charts sitting on my floor waiting to get entered into my shop. I just am just a little overwhelming, but I'm doing it little by little. So the first one is, um, I have some charts from Puntini Puntini. And the first one is Cat Lovers. I'm gonna turn my ring light off and see if that helps. That's yeah, pretty pretty dull. First one is uh, Cat, Lover, Cat Lovers Live Here. And there's also one for Dog Lovers Live Here. And the nice thing is, is that they come with the Puntini Puntini uh, buttons and pin if you can see that I don't know if that's not there we go so that is included with the chart so that is cat lovers live here and also by, by puntini puntini is enjoy every stitch and this one also comes with buttons it comes with a button button and a spool button I think it's a really it's nice when you get little extras like that um, in it, in with the chart. This one is by Thistles, and I really like this chart. It's called Flower The Flower Shop. And the reason I like it is it really does look like you're going to a local flower shop. It's got the flowers being grown. Oh, you are so in the way. It's got the, whoops, sorry. Sorry about that, didn't mean to make anybody dizzy got the flowers being still being grown over here trees in the background being grown and then it's got the flowers in vases and the tall flowers here and then the window of the flower shop I just really think that's a cute design and it's actually got a lot of detail in it so that's the flower shop by thistles brand new by thistles is mrs. Claus kitchen I had a few people order this for the expo she's baking gingerbread cookies also brand new by um, Thistles is Flower Box. That was an expo release. And then this one is from uh, 2017, but I really like this. It's called Hannah and Her Birds. Isn't that cool? Look at all these different bird houses. You got birds here, you have birds in the tree, and then Hannah's got a basket. I just think that's a really cool chart. That's Hannah and her birds. And then this one's also from 2017. And this is called Lady on the Moors. Look at her plaid, plaid dress. And then there's one black sheep. Another Puntini Puntini is Halloween special. And it says, have a spooky, creepy, scary Halloween. And then it comes with this great button pack. It's got the pumpkin, the ghost, the bat, a hat, and a cauldron. And those are all included in, in with the chart. Another one by Thistles from 2017 is Father Winter. And then I'm just doing these are kind of random. I um, was going through Hoffman and I ordered the limited edition 2006 Christmas tree kit by Mirabilia. It's just so pretty. It doesn't come with, this one doesn't come with floss or fabric, but look at all the beads and treasures you get. And I think I have two of those. And then I also got the 2009 Christmas tree kit by Mirabilia by Nora Corbett. And I think I ordered two of these and they only sent me one, so they may be out of these now. And this one, you get the uh, classic Colorworks floss and the beads and treasures. So those are on my site right now. I really like this one. Um, Nikki's Creations. This one I also, these are a little dark, so I hope you can see them, but this is a primitive design. It's called Animal Farm. It's got a cat, 
a pig, a squirrel, a chicken, um, a goose, and a rabbit. And then Halloween sheep. And it's got the witch with three sheep and the sheep have um, kind of hot patterns on them and one of them has a black cat on her back. And Love Seeds, this was new, I believe, for the expo. And I really like this one. Stitcher Sewing Sampler. An alphabet sampler, spools of thread, a sheep, scissors, and a sewing machine. And then she has a... Um, series called quilt of the season and the only one i picked up was quilt of the season halloween so you've got two witches by their cauldron and then a black cat quilt hanging on a frame and then embroidery garden and i believe this was new for the expo okay let me put these down below here then I got a bunch of new charts from, uh, well, they're not all new. Uh, I went through the uh, Rosewood Manor site when I placed my order. And these are just a few. There's a bunch I haven't entered yet. And so some of these are older. But I got these four charts, summer, winter, August, uh, spring, August, spring, and let's see, summer, winter, autumn, and spring bring and first of all they're really nice charts I can't see because the floss is covering them up so here's spring they're smaller uh, 96 by 64 but you get all the floss you need and it's specialty floss from um, house of embroidery which is imported from south africa so it's a chance to use and that the floss comes with it it's not um separate so it's a chance to do a smaller design and try a hand dyed floss that you might not have been able to try otherwise and plus it's nice to be able to get the kit and have all the floss with it so you get um winter and let's see that was sorry summer and here's autumn you can't see the whole thing so all four of those are available with with the floss then brand new from the expo um i do believe this will be my next start is O feathers by rosewood banner i absolutely love this design and it was stitched in sulky threads and there is a sulky floss pack available. It's an additional cost. I think it's $11. So um, I just love this. And I think it's done all in cross stitch. I'm pretty sure it is. And then it's done in one, two, three, six different colors of sulky threads. So I'm pretty sure that's going to be my next start. Then some of the, her older designs that I went through and purchased during Expo. Um, this one is called A Tree by Itself. It says, hold on to what is good, even if it is a handful of earth. And hold on to what you believe, even if it is a tree which stands by itself. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that just, I, this is so amazing. I had watched Helen D's floss tube and she was stitching um, a Rosewood Manor design that was all trees that I think she said she got out of a magazine. It wasn't available as a chart. And this reminded me of that. It's quite a bit different, but I have another one that's also similar. But that one's a tree by itself. And then I got Spring Quakers. Isn't that beautiful? I mean, Rosewood Manor, Karen Kluba at Rosewood Manor is just unbelievable and the number of charts that she has out and I think that fabric what fabric did she stitch it out? I just think it's perfect 
she stitched this one on picture this plus cashel valor b-a-l-o-r 28 count that's so beautiful that's spring quakers and then this one is two blue birds and it's just a um kind of black work background which i really like and then the two blue birds are right here And then this one is Summer Quaker. And Winter Quaker. And look at, they've got the little cardinals sprinkled out around. And then this one diamond or Quaker star in gold. So pretty. And this one is new with the Expo, Whittles, Whittlesford Cottage. And this is first in a series of three. And this one says, the kiss of the sun for pardon, the song of the birds for mirth. One is nearer God's heart in a garden than anywhere else on earth. These are all duplicates. And then look at this one. This is an older chart. Let's see. Oh, well, it's not that old, 2018. Isn't that beautiful? It's called Sunset. It's got the word Sunset and West. But look at those colors. And I'm not sure if I would do it on that same fabric or not. That is a um, Banshee by Fabrics, uh, 32 count Banshee by Fabrics by Stephanie. As, that's really, really beautiful. And then this one is an older one that I picked up from, it doesn't say, I guess it doesn't matter. This one's called Birdville Christmas Stocking. And it's got, look at this, it's got Santa and geese are pulling the sled. Actually, it just has a sled. It's so cute. Okay, put those down below. Then Helen D just got done stitching um, Gnomes in the Garden Row by Bent Creek. And I picked that to up to have in the shop. These row um, designs by Bent Creek have been very popular. And then finally, I've had this sitting on my floor forever. I got the 2021 Prairie School or Santa in stock. And then this one is back in stock, but I wanted to show it uh, in case you want to do Christmas in July. I love this chart. It is Red Christmas, Christmas by Jardin Prouvé. And then I also picked up Cherry Picker by Lottie Da. Then I went through Kathy Barrick's designs when I ordered from her on Expo and picked up a couple older ones, and I really like this one. This is called Garden Vegetable Vegetables, and in addition to the amazing uh, two sides here, it gives a list of vegetables, and then it shows their days to German day. Uh, the depth in inches to sow the seeds, the germ day, germination days for seeds to germinate, and the time in weeks to reach maturity. So for example, it says asparagus, you need to go two inches deep. It'll take 14 to 25 days to germinate and 165 days to reach maturity and you should plant them in April. Isn't that neat? I actually am thinking about doing this for my daughter, but it's a little bit big. It's 300 by 251, and I'm not sure she'd wanna have something that big in her house, but she is an avid gardener. So that is vegetable, garden vegetables. And then the rest of them, I think, are all from, maybe not. Yeah, they're all from uh, Jeanette Douglas Designs. And I went through, I bought a lot of her designs. I still have some more to enter, um, but she is another prolific designer. Uh, and so I just went through during Expo and ordered a whole bunch. 
This one is Be Merry and Be Bright Christmas Sampler. And then she has a vintage series, and this one is Vintage Stars. And Vintage Animals. And Vintage Flowers. And then I don't think I have the other one with me. The other one is Vintage Birds. And then I picked up this one. Um, if you had watched quite a while ago, I was reading excerpts from my um, history of uh, antique samplers in the United States. And there's a whole section on morning samplers, M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G. And the book talked about how morning samplers became um, a little more prevalent after George Washington died and people were creating samplers uh, mourning his death. And then they started doing more and more uh, samplers for loved ones. And this is a morning sampler by Jeanette Douglas. And it says, um, in loving memory of, and then you can put the person's name, the date they were born, and it says, departed from this life and the date that they passed away. And it says, cherished and loved by family and friends. Weep not for me, nor yet be over sad. Isn't that a great way to remember somebody? Then, uh, this is brand new from the expo. Let's do what we love and do it a lot. And then somebody had asked, oh, here's the vintage birds design. I love this design. So that's the fourth one in the vintage series. Then when I was getting ready for Expo, somebody asked about the most suitable name series by Jeanette Douglas. and. Um, she wanted all, she had one and she wanted all the rest. So I ended up ordering them all for the shop and they are, they are really cool. Um, this one is Devoted Dorothy, Button Betty, Alphabet Annie, Nimble Nettie, Modest Mildred, Humble Hilda, Kind Karen, and I think there's a Prim Penny. I think there's one more. Yep, here we go. Oh, Wool Willie, and Prim Penny. Aren't those great? So that is the A Most Suitable Name series by Jeanette Douglas. And those are all pretty quick stitches. Um, then, brand, oh, this is relatively new, not brand new. Cozy Into Winter by Jeanette Douglas. And then she came out with number six in her Blooming Bouquets series. And if you haven't checked out the Blooming Bouquet series, they are just phenomenal. Number six is Hopeful, and this was an Expo release. And there is a Silk Floss pack available. It has all these different flosses in it that are needed to complete that design. And just to show you a couple other ones, this is number three in the series, Joyful. Number five is Bountiful. And I think that's it. And then the last chart I have to show you is uh, Barbara Anna Designs Dreaming of Klimt. So that's it for, I have a lot, lot, lot more to add. So keep checking back. And if you're not on my uh, newsletter list, I always send out a newsletter when I've updated the shop with new inventory. So, uh, new giveaways. So we are going to re-give away the planner. So this is a planner. I, I want to get this out right away because it is for 2021 and now we're already in April. Um, so unfortunately, the person who won didn't, uh, didn't request it. 
So use the word planner in your sentence. And then this one is the Cozy in, Into Winter chart by Jeanette Douglas. This is actually a pre-owned chart, but it's brand, brand new condition. And use the word Cozy, C-O-Z-Y. You must be 18 and uh, don't use the word giveaway. So uh, yeah, that's it. Um, what's coming up? Like I said, we've got some travel planned. It is April 21st right now. I get my shot next week, then I have to wait two weeks. Um, and actually my husband is leaving Friday. He's gonna be gone for two whole weeks. He is going to go help a friend, college friend of his do some farming. He's gonna plant corn and soybeans. So that's pretty exciting. And I'll be home alone, but that's, that's uh, I, he used to travel all the time for his job. So that's nothing new. And then we've got our trip to Las Vegas planned. Uh, we'll be going for four nights for that. And then we're going, like I said, to my niece's graduation party. And then my daughter's home. And we still want to get our camper out and get at least a couple nights of camping in. So it feels like all of a sudden everything's happening at once. And um, it's like, man, the summer's already over and it's not, not even here yet. So we'll see, how, see whether all of that comes to fruition and, and see how that goes. Um, oh, I had one more giveaway. Sorry. This is by Kitten Stitchers. This is a needle minder. Look at her. Isn't that hilarious? So this is made out of wood. It's flat. And let's see. Uh, what should we use for the sentence? Use the word glasses. So you can just say, I wear glasses. Uh, uh, I don't wear glasses. She looks good in glasses. Uh, glasses are a pain in the rear. You know, things like that. So that'll also be a giveaway. So put those back up here. All right, I think that's it. Thanks for watching everybody. Please hit the subscribe button and then hit the bell for notifications. And feel free to share with your friends. Happy stitching everybody. Bye-bye.